Okay, you're welcome back to the programme and uh, genuinely really pleased uh, to welcome into studio our next guest and that is Moya Brennan. Hello, Greg. How are Thank you doing? You. So I kind of feel a wee bit honoured that you're spending a bit of your birthday <laughs> with us here, uh, myself and, and our listeners. Happy birthday to you. Thank you so much. Well, it's nice to be on air on my birthday. I don't know if I've I've done that before. Um, Excellent. I can't remember anyway. Brilliant. Well, listen, we'll just take that as an exclusive <laughs> birthday interview <laughs> with is. Moya. Uh, and you're, you're 70 today, yeah. and I find that incredibly hard to believe. Um, oh, you, you must have amazing genes or an amazing diet or whatever it might be. Uh, but <laughs> yeah. you probably, probably put it down to the music. and It's down to music, but I um, my mum looks incredible. I mean, she is a grand age now and she certainly doesn't look like it. And my dad as well had good genes. So it definitely comes from the family. But, you know, you have to kind of take care of yourself, you know. Yeah. And I have a great beautician, my, my sister-in-law, who's Mary Ferry. And, um, you know, but, you know, I, I look after my diet um, and, you know, when I'm touring and, you know, I, I don't drink or anything like that when I'm especially when I'm, I'm when I'm touring. And I really do, I don't drink that much anyway, you yeah. know, anymore. Just I will I will celebrate today and, you know, a little bit. But some it's, of us it's, keep our age a closely guarded <laughs> secret, but you're very proud of it. And why not? But Well, you know, because I'm on stage and everybody knows me anyway. Look, you can just by by going to your phone, you know exactly what age I am. So it's no big deal for me, you know. Um, and it's only a number, you know, if anybody. I, I kind of, when I reached 60s, the 60s, I, I kind of didn't mind. The 70s are kind of, you know. But still, it's, you know, it's... You know, it, it's. I think people live longer now. Mm. Look younger when they're than they were. You know, when my grandmother was seventy. Um, I think. I think times have changed, and we have, as you said as well. We, you know, we can look after our diets. We can look after ourselves in 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 such a way that, mm. um, you know, the, the nourishment and different things, and you know. You're making sure you have plenty of vitamins and all those kind of things. Yeah. And well, my mother you know. passed away recently, well, a couple of years ago, uh, into her eighties. She'd kill me if she heard me saying it, but she never actually <laughs> officially passed thirty-eight. Oh so really? The, oh, the well, clock stopped ticking yeah. at thirty-eight. And, and I, it's it's important as well. Not to, I, I'm not a huge sun person. Yes. So it's putting your face up to the sun is is not a good thing. No. And I, that's I, something I haven't really done, and I think that's probably helped a lot. Yeah, and maybe ahead of the the curve on that one because obviously it's something that's that's very widely discussed now. The damage uh, that yes. the sun can the sun can do to us. Absolutely. Um, you started playing professionally in the 70s, but it was inevitable that, that this yeah. was going to happen, really, wasn't it? What's your earliest memories of, of, of music and playing music? You were oh, born into it and it was you all know, around you. When I was, even in national school, my grandparents would have little dramas and music. We were all, always learning, you know, the old Gaelic songs and everything, like since I was knee high, really. Um, then my mother used to put us in for the faces. There was a face in every town in those days. Um, and then the first time I kind of, um, you know, uh, besides the faces, I suppose the first time I was 11 years of age when my father took me to to Glasgow, to Scotland. And Glasgow and Edinburgh, they used to always go over St. Patrick's Day. My father had a show band and uh, he wanted me to do some Irish dancing. Um, there I was in my costume. But of course, he had me singing um, some popular songs, which is, you know, one of them was uh, um, um, Soldier Boy. The other one was, um, uh, what's it? My boy, lollipop. And there I was singing it, you know, in my Irish costume. And did I care? Not at all. You know, I was just thrilled to be on stage. So, so from a very early age, I suppose I was used to it. But I, I still get nervous going on stage. We just came back from the Cambridge Folk Festival at the weekend. I was over there. Um, and it's just, it's great. It's just a great feeling. Mm. And I think the best performers, um, the best performers and those that love it and still do it, I think you need that nerves. It's, it's you know, it's an emotion. Yeah. It's not always a negative emotion, nerves. You can oh, use it very much to your advantage. But I think once that stops, maybe mm. you're, to some extent, maybe your interest in something has stopped. I, I would say, you know, when people ask me for advice in the music business, I just say to them, you know, when you think you know it all, give it up, mm. you know, because I'm still learning and I'm still yeah. doing things and writing songs with different types of people and everything. And we are on a, on a farewell planet tour at the moment. And, we you know, anybody that thinks that, oh, 
you know, they, they're, they'll be back. They'll be back. You're not going to do a Frank Sinatra on it. This no, is the actual no, final final convention or Bagatelle or any of those. <laughs> <laughs> um, we're definitely we we you know we were a band that always said you know what we did would be true to form, and mm. we just wanted to go out with a bang, and um, you know, traveling with your brothers and your uncles for. Like over fifty years <laughs> can be hard going. It can sometimes, be hard going, but, but it's an amazing gift as well, too, isn't it's, it? It's it's that's you, you, you know yeah. it, it's tough, but yeah. to have all that longevity, that level of success. I mean, fifteen million uh, plus uh, records sold, countless mm. millions of people that you've performed to. You know, a lot of us don't get an opportunity to have that kind of a contribution to mm. arts, the cultural people's lives. I mean, it really is a. It's a wonderful blessing. It, 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 it really, really is because when you think of it, it's it's been phenomenal really because, you know, first of all, when we started off, we were singing Gaelic songs and we had no idea that we would end up inventing a new sound, really, um, which is kind of people now relate to it as a Celtic sound. We had no idea that we'd be writing songs for, you know, TV shows, uh, films and things like that. We've had an amazing journey mm. and it's nice to call it, you know, a, f- a final, you know, we're really, really enjoying this tour because it's the final tour. This, uh, there's an amazing spirit on stage. And, you know, when I said, you know, travel with your brothers and your uncles for, you know, uh, uh, but it, we do get on yeah. and we, you know, we wouldn't be doing it for so long if we hadn't got on. It's fantastic. But there's a, just an amazing spirit on stage mm. now because knowing that this is it. Yeah. I mean, we have the last Dublin concert. The last Irish concert now is going to be in December, which is in the ninth in the in the three arena. Mm. And uh, that'll be that'll be it. That's yeah. going to be the last uh, concert for, but, for I mean. In it's Ireland, anyway. Yeah, of course. But that's a great piece with the decision because you're able to yes. enjoy it for what it is. And it's not the end of everything. It's the end of performing just, just, as this collective. Just, just yeah. clannered, yeah. And do it um, on your own terms in the way you want to Yeah. Do. Because we we all have different things. I have my solo career as well, and I, as I said, I like collaborating and writing with different uh, other types of musicians as well as you know um, uh, people that I've known for years. And and it's just it's great, and it's great to have the the, the freedom to be able to do that as well. Um, so in in that way, it's kind of nice, yeah, and I it's nice so, to yeah. you know. I mean, we still have to do uh, tours in America and. And uh, down under, we're going down. I know Olive is listening to me in Australia and we're heading down the your way um, next March. Um, and I have an uncle out there as well, Owen and Colleen, and they're going to be listening. And, mm. you know, and it's it's just great that we were able to include as many places that we have been before, yeah. you know, and the tour will finish kind of next summer um, in 1923, so and it's it's quite appropriate because Clannad started in 1970 mm-hmm. with the Letterkenny Folk Festival, and we called ourselves Clannad at that time, um, and so and then our first album was 1973. So within the time scale, you know, because when we started this, it was the pandemic came upon us, and we started the UK tour in 2020. But it's still within the 50 years of. The, the beginning yes, of Planet. Of you know. And to some extent, or maybe <clears throat> to a great extent, is this about sort of a thank you to the fans? Uh, you know, Very is much. that why you're impo- it's important to pick the territories that you're going, whereby yeah. they were there maybe from the beginning or were some of your biggest supporters, and just to give them an opportunity to uh, see us as a collective for the last time? Absolutely. And um, certainly we had a fantastic European tour. I mean, we did something like 40 concerts in 13 s- countries. Um, and it was amazing. And there were people crying. I said, you can't do this. And, you know, and some of them are obviously flying into Dublin as well. But, you know, and there's, you know, you get on, on Twitter and Facebook and everything, people like the likes of, you know, from South America, from Mexico, uh, from Asia, you know, please come, please mm. come. But you just, you know, it, yeah. it, 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 they just, I mean, when we did a, a, um, a, a, the 50th anniversary in Leo's, uh, Leo's Tavern there um, a couple of years ago there were people flowing, flew in from Brazil and from Japan mm. and from Russia and places like that yeah, but they're which the is ones, amazing yeah they're the ones that are able to say yeah. I was there <laughs> yeah. do you know what I mean it's, 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 it's an amazing thing for you but can you imagine what a lovely thing for them to be able to tell and they will tell people around them yeah um, in, in terms of what 
you decided to do, what instruments you decided to specialise in. It wasn't like, you know, there was a, a, a potential for a collective here and there was some gaps in the band. Yeah. <laughs> How did you decide what, what road to go down in terms of the instruments that you loved and that you wanted to play from the beginning? Well, I, I think it's had something to do with the, the sound as well. We we concentrated a lot on our uh, uh, on our voices and that. But growing up, because my father had a show band, there were always guitars and there was the double bass in the older um, show band years ago that Kieran picked up. Um, and so there was a lot of kind of guitars and that. And, and Paul picked up the silver flute. My father sent me to Sligo to learn the harp. He had this in in his mind that it was something, this is long before, obviously, you know, the thought of Clannock came into uh, being. Um, but he just, Mary O'Hara, he loved Mary O'Hara and that's where she learned the harp. So I hated it first, you know, because <laughs> I just, this image of like, you know, this kind of Colleen girl yes. singing this spinning wheel, with, you know, with the with the harp, and I I really hated it. And it was only that when the the Paul and Kieran and Paddy and all, we used to practice when everybody used to leave the pub. When my dad opened the pub Leo's Tavern, uh, you know, over fifty years ago, it was like microphones and everything for us. And we used to just get up when everybody left and practice and do things. And 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 the boys were playing together, and they said, you know, how about the harp, you know, to bring the harp in. And that's when I started liking the harp mm. because they they included it as part of the arrangements rather than st sticking out kind of, you know, yeah. as being that Irish Colleen thing. So it worked really well. And, and, you know, and it's kind of, as I said, that with the voices and the the, you know, the instrumentation around us, I suppose, like, I mean, coming from Donegal has a lot to do with the, the sound we have yeah. and the Gaelic language as well. Because, mm -hmm. you know, people have asked around the world, you know, said, where do you get that sound? And I just say, come to Donegal and yeah. you'll feel it's that earthiness. You. And all yeah. around you. Yeah, particularly yeah, sure. as the further west you go, I think, nowadays. Yeah. Um, obviously, because I can't take up too much of your time, but when you. did it become clear that you were onto something? Do you know what I mean? Uh, I suppose not until Harry's game. Um, we, you know, we, we were enjoying, we had our sixth album made um, and we had a, a song on there, a Scottish Gaelic song that we, we were starting to experiment vocally with and, and keyboards. And uh, the writer of, of Harry's Game um, heard that album and loved what we were doing. And he mm. approached the Yorkshire TV and said, look, I want something really different for this uh, the show. And so they came over and, and spoke to us about it. And, you know, we were always a cultural band. And um, so, you know, we were really careful and not getting involved politically in, in anything. And when we saw what it was about, we hadn't a clue what this what it was about until we saw the rushes. And um, and, you know, it was really it kind of, you know, it, it, mainly by two people, two men on both sides of, of the the border kind of you know, and nobody wins, the boat mm. dies, mm. nobody wins in the state of war kind of thing. And that appealed to us. Mm -hmm. And Kieran and Paul then we, and w with me, we got together and um, and decided to write something for the first time. And, um, you know, the boys came up with this, this song and we recorded it. And we did a demo first and they said, fantastic. Then we recorded it and we went off to Germany on a tour. And in the middle of the German mm. tour, the, the this you know you have to remember as well TV. There was only four stations. Yeah, yeah. And so everybody was watching the show that was on Captive Monday, audience. Tuesday, yeah. Wednesday, yeah. Um, and uh, it was a huge opportunity. Mm. And so we were hearing all these vibes. And the Sunday before it was played, Noel Noel Edmonds played it on his show before the like the the chart show, and everybody was saying, "What's that? What's mm. that?" And it was just very different. Yeah. And then we kind of felt, wow, you know, we kind of had to uh, step back yeah, ourselves. It's, an and say, it's, it's, you know. it's touching people on an international stage. Uh, and yeah. it's interesting, kind of the conversation that was happening earlier this year from uh, musicians and, and composers, you know, this ability now on your streaming services to skip mm -hmm. the intro. You know, and there's some yeah. you can so you skip the theme tune, yeah, uh, and it's different times, and and I kind of get now why it's probably more important that you can't do that, that you can hear that a lot of work goes into these songs and it yes. sets the program up, mm. um, because there's some great theme tunes, but we just have this tendency to skip them. Um, <laughs> so, do you love uh, that song? Do you feel it was the catalyst for something? Do you feel maybe it overdefines who you are or who you are as an individual? What's your relationship with the uh, the theme from Harry's Game? Now? I love 
singing it still. Yeah. And, you know, and just it's just such a great vibe when, you know, that drone starts and, you know, and I go up to the mic and just sing it. And yeah. it just you can you know, you can feel something from the audience. It's, mm. you know, it, there's an aura that kind of relates to just that whole kind of feeling of it, it was it was huge yeah. for us. It kind of completely, you know, you have to remember we were a young band from Donegal singing Gaelic songs. Yes. And everybody was laughing at us. Yeah. You know, the, in Ireland, it was the same. And you'll never get anywhere with that. And what that. was really sweet about it and the cherry and the cake was the fact that this is a Gaelic song. It was all in Irish and and uh we were on top of the pop singing it and you kind of go, what? Mm. <laughs> you know, it, it was it was really amazing. And they, you know, I mean, they had to take it off the radio for a day in, in England when they discovered we were actually singing words <laughs> and they, they thought, thought it maybe it was offensive. Yeah. Right, okay. And of course it wasn't. <laughs> um, so uh, it, we're going into obvious territory here then. I mean, your musical highlights, is it as a collective, is it as, as an individual? You sang in front of the Pope, you've mm. been on top of the Pops, you've... You know, you would have got that phone call where you realise that something's about to explode. Mm. Is it easy for you to sort of pick out a highlight for you of your career to date? And is it an individual one or a, or a clan and collective one? Um, it's collective mm. because there's so many different things. With, you know, Grammy Awards and Ivor Nobel Awards, they're all really special. But every time somebody asks me that question, I still can feel the the the, the feeling I got when we won the Letter Kenny Folk Festival in 1970. Wow. Would you believe? I'll, I'll never forget it. I was up on the balcony with my mum and the Una McCafferty and it, it just, we weren't expecting it. And my brothers were on the stage when I was still on the balcony saying, what just happened? And it, it's just will always stick in my mind as being something that just, I suppose, started that path, mm. you know, and, and so it's very dear to me. Yeah. What a brilliant answer. <clears throat> and the great thing is you give that, give that answer all over the world. So you give yes. the, you, you know, oh, I do, mean, so. I do, I do indeed. Yeah. Um, it took you to 1992 to release a solo album. Yeah. Um, was that because you were like, why was the just the time right? Or maybe that felt quite early in your career or what was this? No, feeling in it, that? It, well, kind of were very busy. Mm. Um, and um, I sort of, I suppose Paul had left the band for a while and I was curious about my own kind of, you know, Paul and Kieran really were the main writers and I had dabbled here and there with adding a song, you know, on mm. one or two of the albums. And I was curious about how, how influenced I was myself and, you know, the journey that I'd been on. And I had no idea when I started that I would end up writing all except one song on the, my first solo album. Yeah. And it was amazing because I had just got married. Um, I was pregnant and, you know, just, doing you need, a solo album. Something just to fill the time. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know. Well, great encouragement yeah. from, from my husband. I wouldn't have been able to do it without him. Um, and, so were and you kind of, really, it was a test, was it? Was it to see, was it to find your place in it, this around all these uber talented people? I'm not saying they were holding you back in any way, but no. was, it, was it, was that sort of say, well, what well, am I capable of? No, it, it, it was. Yeah. And it was just a, you know, it was a challenge for me. And as I said, without Tim now, I would, I don't know if I would have made that step as positive um, if he hadn't been there and, and he was so encouraging to me. What a lovely me. thing to be able to say about another you know, human being, isn't it? It's well, really nice. he's my friend, my husband, yeah. my everything. And it's he's been a, a huge person in mm. my life that has made me who I am. That's and uh, it's it's absolutely fantastic. And that's maybe why I'm, and maybe I'm not looking too bad at 70 because of just being happy. Yeah, there's a lot to be said for that. Yeah. I do wonder, and particularly now you see people so... I know passion is important, but they're so they're so passionate. It's all consuming, and you just wonder yeah. what's that doing to them. Yeah, and and you know, are they really maybe enjoying what you have to give. small time we have here? Yeah. We're just blitz, I mean, like. listen to you know earlier on Eamon and and what he does for the you know the cancer bus mm. and everything. It's it's just fantastic what people do, you know, and yeah. and and sharing. It's mm -hmm. so important to give. Yeah. You know, you receive so much by giving. Mm -hmm. And, you know, for people like that, I just, it's huge admiration yeah. for, I think You talked about when, you, and, and I wholeheartedly agree, you talked about when, you know, things exploded. And you talked about the fact, mm. as you're right, there were four channels and often you couldn't get many of them here, <laughs> yeah. uh, depending on what system you had set up. But since then, we've had the advent of, you know, your videos are all over YouTube. You just never posted them. Fans have posted yeah. them and they've got a million views. <laughs> and you don't even know it because you probably haven't seen it. And, of course, you've got people listening to you on Spotify 
Spotify and across all the other mm-hmm. streaming services. That that's obviously widened your audience, and and you know you're picking up new audience all the, all time. the time. Like it's yeah. it's forever now. This is <clears throat> this is when we're all gone. This continues. Yeah, it's amazing because you know even you know the audiences that come to us. You know, are you know? I'm always surprised at some of the younger audiences yeah. that come to us, which is really amazing, especially right across Europe and that. And it is fantastic because I mean, people, you know, come to your show, and the next thing you're on, you know, and it's been passed around the world. You know, you sing one of the songs, and they're sharing it and everything. And I think it's a good mm. thing, really. It's it's kind of good. I just wish so sometimes. You know, when you're when you're looking down from the from the audience. And you're starting to sing one of the favourite songs, like Robin of Sherwood, you know, Robin the Hooded Man or something. And everybody puts up their camera. And I said, then, watch the moment rather than, you know, you're not, you know. Especially, on, I know exactly what you're on about because you're looking <laughs> at it through the prism of a dirty three-inch screen. I know, you know rather, than, your rather pocket, than what's but, on but, the, yeah. the stage. Especially but I know if they're people, televised because yeah. they can watch it in perfect quality when they get on later. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I suppose it's a modern way of the catching moment. that moment. It's moment, like, yeah. you know, people probably might not ask for your autograph uh, as much now they want a selfie and I suppose maybe that's, that's just, true. That's just that's the true. way it is. That's how people are archiving uh, yeah. the memories. But you can't, you have to allow yourself to be in the moment, don't you? Yeah, you know. that is true. That is Last couple true. of questions um, b- before I let you go. Just the future of music. You know, mm-hmm. uh, what what I, I I don't know enough really to, to sort of say with any authority, but what I do see is lots of brilliant musicians in Donegal, uh, very mm. close to the genre that you're in, coming through. It feels like there's a, there's a good future for music creation, you know, traditional music, music in that kind of genre. And singer-songwriters. Singer-songwriters. Because I have I, uh, something that I started um, uh, about eight years ago, uh, more than that, uh, Club Biaw that I do on a monthly basis. And it was a stage that I, I just opened up for young singers or players or performers that can get up and sing a song or two, especially if they're writing themselves as well. And it's an opportunity because Dad gave us, my father, Leo, gave us that opportunity to get up and play when we're still at school and boarding school now, to get up and perform on the stage. There's nothing like, you know, you can practice all you want, but getting on stage is where you learn mm. your craft. Mm. So it's lovely to see this. And I'm, you know, I, I do it all the time. Mm. I, and on the 19th of this month, uh, we have Without Willow, a young band from, from Donegal that are my guests because I always have a guest as well. Because I always found that when, when you have a, a night of... Um, you know, uh, of young musicians, people will come with their family and friends. And by the end of the night, they, only the last person's family and friends are there. But I have a, a you know, a, a, a guest. So everybody stays and it's kind of a celebration. Yeah. And, the, you know, the kids get to know each other as well. And there's been so many great stories and great, mm. great things that have happened yeah. to to some of these young kids mm-hmm. now. That, But I, I think in Donegal, music is absolutely alive yeah. and well and as you say and singer songwriters in the trad world and everything but it's thanks it's, to you uh, well, and others within the industry working with them and encouraging them and inspiring them I mean there's I no think doubt it's important. I think we do that better here in the northwest than yeah. we, we, we do elsewhere um, what opportunities do people have to see uh, you or All Planet Live coming up just as we wrap things up Maya well the only opportunity that's in Ireland now is on the 9th of December uh, in the three arena that's going to be the last uh, Clannad Dublin gig for sure we've done we've been in Galway and Derry and Belfast Cork um, Wexford different places and uh, this is it's coming to an end and it, it, we're very happy about it I mean it's quite emotional but there's a great spirit in it and it's really lovely mm. and, and it is definitely you know it, it is going to be the end so if they want to hear Clannad it'll have to be Dublin I'm afraid Okay. well listen it's <laughs> Never been closer, really. Now Dublin people are travelling yeah, up and down to of concerts. Course. And, yeah, they do uh, all the with, time. With a lot of people in that environment. Um, okay, what are you going to do for the rest of the day that you can tell us? Is it? What do you like? Are you going to go bells and whistles? I want balloons. I want confetti. <laughs> I want a themed cake. Or are you just going to uh, chill out with those uh, closest to ch- you? Believe it or not, I'm going down for my driver's new driver's license. <laughs> 
<laughs> that is not very showbiz, Moya. Can no, we re record after that, this with a different... After that, I'll have a nice lunch somewhere yes. and I'll be joining the rest of my family and, and having a, a really great time. And, and will the instruments come yeah. out or will you just chat? Sorry? Will the instruments come out or will you just chat? No, I think I'll just chill. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, it was a mad weekend. We were playing in Galway and I said Cambridge Folk Festival and everything. There will be a song or two. There'll be, there'll be definitely music there. But sometimes I leave it up to the young ones now, the mm. nieces and nephews, who are amazing yeah. musicians and great singers. Brilliant. And uh, But there's, there's always music, but... But it'll be chilled. It'll be lovely. nice, yeah. Well, we listen, it, as I said at the beginning, and I, and I mean it in earnest, it's been lovely to spend a bit of your birthday with you yeah, and for great. our listeners as well. I'm talking on behalf of all of us. And uh, we look forward to for, for everything that is to come and, and, and we wish great. you a happy birthday. And again, thank you so much for calling in. It's an absolute pleasure, Greg. Thank you.